Hey guys, I'm here today with a bit of a different video. I want to discuss a raging problem in the Dreadhunger community. It's a problem that's quite layered, but I've boiled it down to one particular problem. Player entitlement and respect. Now to be clear, the goal of this video is to call this out as a problem, explain what I mean, and hopefully inspire change in the hearts of those who are consumed by it. Now what do I mean by this? Well, Dreadhunger is a very well-made game, with exceptional depth and variance built into every match, especially when you compare the game to every other deception game out there. It's kept me playing for over 1200 hours, and I know many of the English-speaking community are at at least 200 hours. Just think about that for a moment. 200 hours of entertainment. But this is where it gets sour. I'm seeing a common trend on the Dreadhunger Steam Store. Players with a large amount of hours in Dreadhunger have the audacity to leave a bad review and not recommend it to new players. Let's break that down for a moment. So for 40 Australian dollars, these players have gotten 100, 300, 500, 1000 or 2000 plus hours of entertainment out of this wonderful game but they're walking away with a bad taste in their mouth. So much so that they wouldn't recommend the game to other players despite clear exceptional value of $40 for that much entertainment. These same bad reviews often include complaints that Dreadhunger updates include shitty DLC, which they don't spend money on. It's fine if you don't want to spend money on a video game, but the audacity to complain about a game implementing ways to earn more money from their regular player base who haven't spent a cent on the game since they bought it for $40 200 hours ago is ridiculous. I mean, in comparison, if it were me running the company, I'd be introducing new crew characters that were purchasable DLC in the same way Dead by Daylight introduces new killers and survivors, which means the updates will actually cost you money, not the DLC that is just little cosmetics. I mean, it was so successful for Dead by Daylight, it kept them, it's kept them making more content for their game for years and years and years. And that's all I want from Dreadhunger, is to keep making new content. Do you not want new content? Do you want the game to stay stagnant? That's just how you do it. You leave bad reviews in a video game that you love, and you complain about the ways that they've chosen to make money from it. When you only spent $40 a while ago, 200 hours ago, you see the problem? But I've thought long and hard about why our community are leaving such negative reviews. I mean, a lot of the reviews are written by people I've played a bunch of Dreadhunger games with, plenty of Dreadhunger games with people that I, I respect and I think are good people. So I can't just write off the reviews as, well, shitty people leaving shitty reviews. There's a bit more going on here. Something that's infecting or making good people leave bad reviews on a game they love. At first I thought it was because of the nature of Dreadhunger and the flurry of emotions the game causes you to go through in just one game alone. It's very possible these bad reviews were written after a particularly bad game or a series of games and as a vent for their anger they put it all into a negative review for the world to see. If this were true, I'd hope each of these players would come back later on or wake up the next day and take their review down as they launch Dreadhunger up to get another three plus hours of entertainment for no additional fee. But they don't. At least a majority don't. So there must be more to it. I next considered that it might be the result of feeling ignored as we all know how frustrating that feels. These players have spent hundreds if not thousands of hours learning and improving themselves at Dreadhunger, but when they take the time to write out and send suggestions to improve the game, they feel ignored. Now I totally understand this feeling, it royally sucks. As someone who writes guides and likes to push the envelope, I've certainly formed my own strong opinions about the game and the direction I would take it if I had the power to do so but I don't, and neither do any of you leaving negative reviews fueled from the frustration of being ignored. We're all lucky players who discovered a game created by people who have sunk more time and money into creating it than we could possibly understand. 
I mean, just look at this footage of the approach back in 2019. How the hell do you turn this into the beautiful game we have today? Hell, it took me a week and a half to record and edit this damn video alone. So when we make big suggestions or requests like rework the approach or make more maps, it's not so easy. Especially when the developers aren't some massive studio with thousands of people ready to help develop the game at a moment's notice. As for smaller ticket items, I'm seeing a chorus of complaints with quite a similar tone. Requests like change or remove muskets or remove nitro rushing. Other general complaints are about the developer team and the toxic community. I sympathise with these last two critiques, at least a little bit. The community certainly does have an undesirable amount of toxic players who use their voice chat to spread hate or just shitty shit. <laughs> but I very much consider these people a vocal minority. So what I think this critique means about having a toxic community is there are a lot of clashing personalities which creates issues and words can be exchanged in the moment. I wouldn't consider these individuals toxic but together they create a somewhat toxic environment as they argue with each other. As for comments on the developer team, I'm lucky enough to be speaking with the team pretty regularly and I can assure you that their hearts are well and truly in the right place. They've created a game that we all, at least at some point, loved and it shouldn't be a big ask to show a little bit of respect when talking to them. I mean, I personally haven't agreed with every change that's been implemented into Dreadhunger, but I make an effort to formulate my critiques and turn them into update analysis videos that focus on both the good and the bad of each update. Do you know how crappy it is to work and work and work on something only to be met with critique after critique? Hell, it's deflating, it's disheartening and it sucks. Would it kill our community to comment on the good changes that were made every now and then? Would it be that much to ask to play a game of Dreadhunger and note everything they enjoyed in that one game? Just one game to do that. Hell, it's been like three days since the new reworked Expanse map has been released, and I'm already seeing and having to comment on negative responses, on critiques, on petty little pecks at what needs to be changed, or things that they wish were still in the game or things that were removed that should be there. And the problem isn't that those uh, opinions that sure have some validity. The problem is the fact that the way they're articulated isn't productive. It's, I've seen this new content you've come out with. I've had it for three days and I want what I had before. I want it now. How dare you have done this? You know, it's, it's a very entitled response and it shows very little respect to the people who spent more time than you can understand into creating, designing, fixing, reworking the Expanse map into what you have today. I can't explain to you how many iterations there were of this Expanse map. We experimented with Nitro being at the end of the boardwalk, creating a longer Nitro experience. There was even a big fuck off arrow in the sky to help us play testers find where the new Nitro was. There was the first iteration of the chapel that sort of branched off the boardwalk up into its own little town, defended by a bongo where the Nitro was placed. There was even a version where the Nitro was at the top of the lighthouse. It was quite early into the Expanse development, so we are testing and throwing a lot of ideas around, but it was quite interesting. You had to climb up the top around the outside and grab a Nitro and then go down these sort of like podium landings on the way back down to then carry Nitro around how you used to around the back of the lighthouse and down to the iceberg. It was quite a long path, it was decent, but as you can imagine, the thralls had a ball <laughs> using Nitro throwing them down at us, exploding them, taking out anyone that came. It was a very explosive couple of play tests there, yeah. <laughs> so next time you're on the new Expanse map, go in with the intent to note down or find all the little details that you love about the new map. Things like the skeletons holding hands in the Wailing Village, or the dead guy in the cave system on the left who's laying in a bed. Uh, trying to stay warm, but he froze to death. A lot of love was put into this map. 
and it's important to remind yourself about all the good things about the map and not just write down all the critiques you can think of two weeks after the map has been released. Give it some time, see how the map improves. You know it will over time, it gets easier, the crew will have an easier time, coal will be more efficient, the map will be balanced again, things like that, but have some appreciation. It's also important to note that just because a change is implemented or the devs don't agree with your suggestions, that it is a bad thing that needs a dramatic response. A little inside scoop for you. During the development of Doppelganger, there was a point where Doppelganger changed your own appearance into another character and you played as usual, dressed as them. I fell in love with this spell. It had no damage reflection and you were just another character for something like 5 minutes. You could cast other spells whilst in the doppelganger and you could also die still dressed as that doppelganger. Now the reason I'm telling you this is the dev team felt this was too easily countered through voice chat and after a bit of back and forth they had the idea to change the spell to the way it is today, that being the creation of a clone which you control while your original character is invisible. I felt this was a big mistake. I thought long and hard about it, wrote out a mini essay about why it should stay the way it was with a few minor changes and I stayed up late one night trying to plead my case. Even after spending all that time passionately writing it out, I was quote unquote ignored. A new doppel was introduced. I was a bit of a mess mentally the next day from the lack of sleep, excessive stress and feeling ignored. I felt like I'd remained respectful in the debate but I was frustrated that I hadn't been listened to. I took some time to recalibrate, talked it over with my partner, and after a few days, I was back to my normal self and gave the new doppelganger a chance. I wasn't instantly sold on it, and it was developed further, but I started to get on board. I realized the doom and gloom I'd predicted from the spell's change was just my brain's worst case scenario. I realized I wasn't the dread hunger prophet I thought I had been, and other people had good ideas too. The dev team won my complete respect that day. Respect I didn't know I had to give. Now that still doesn't mean I don't disagree with them on things, but I keep a far more open mind and listen to proposed changes and the reasons they're being made, at least a lot more than I used to. I still passionately fight for changes I believe to be important, but I'm more accepting that just because my changes aren't implemented, that it's still going to be okay. So let's apply this to our current problem. The muskets are OP, fix or remove them critique. It's very clear the dev team believe that muskets play an important role in balancing the game. PVP thralls are punished appropriately with muskets only punishing thralls who make mistakes and out themselves or intentionally out themselves for minor early advantages. It's completely possible that muskets aren't the big bad demon that you've made them out to be in your head and you've spread around other Dreadhunker lobbies. In your review, is it possible that adapting your thrall strategies to include musket counterplay, namely preventing them from being open or securing one yourself is an acceptable counterplay and balances muskets? Now it sucks being shot by a musket from across the map and being chunked but it's the response to your decision as a thrall, not the automatic go-to when thralls aren't known for the crew. It's completely preventable. To put this in even more context, let's take a few other deception games and have a look at them. What do Town of Salem, Among Us, Evil, and First Class Trouble all have in common? When an imposter or bad guy is discovered by the good guys, they can be unavoidably executed by public vote. These games punish imposters for blatant imposter behaviour to the point where your game is simply over. Dreadhunger's muskets are the equivalent of Evil's cage or Among Us's airlock. As the imposter, you removed the deception element of the game for a small advantage. You aren't just allowed to run around scot-free with no goal but to kill and delay the crew for the rest of the game after doing that. You now have a new challenge to deal with muskets. They are deadly but require skill and a bit of luck from long range. But not only can they be dodged, they can also be used against the crew whose weapons they are. And if you do die, you're given a second chance life. Among Us imposters would kill for that chance. 
I mean, would you prefer the muskets to auto-lock and execute you when you have outed yourself? Or that the ship has a voting system that bans you from even entering the ship? What replacement punishment would you introduce to Dreadhunger that gives the weaker class of crew the ability to fight back and kill a thrall who outs themselves too early into the game? Crew don't get the luxury of spending the whole game prepping for a fight. So what's the solution? My point here is there's clearly more than one way of handling this, and the sheer volume of negative reviews that mention these problems is almost unbelievable. Do these people not realise how bloody lucky we are? How much freedom they have in both the crew and thrall roles? How much work, love, time, money and effort went into creating this brilliant game only for them to complain about a handful of ultimately minor things in the grand scheme of Dreadhunger and let it define how they review the game. This is where I realised the fault of the problem. Player entitlement. As players, we feel we're entitled to a good game. We spend hours and hours and hours playing Dreadhunger. We know it's inside and out. We find its problems and design solutions to them in our head out of love for the game. We've also paid for a product and we feel that we are entitled to the best possible version of that product, which is generally going to be the product that we wanted or are asking for. But it's not that simple. We aren't the game designers, we're lucky people who get to spend their time playing a game we spent $40 on. We aren't entitled to a perfect game, certainly not from a developer team of this size. What I might have in my head as the perfect Dreadhunger product might be totally different to what you have in your head, which is probably completely different to the vision that the developers have for the game. We can't just shout out our opinions at the devs and expect all our changes to be implemented, no matter how well thought out they may be or how many people support it. We also, as a community, need to learn how to share our opinions more effectively and focus on the positives that we love about the game. Using the positives as an example of good game design to further explain why a particular element may not be working is also absolutely necessary for productive well, productive criticism. Well-articulated, constructive criticism presented as a helpful suggestion, not as a necessary and expected change the devs must implement now, or they'll have a crappy game, is everything to creating, well, the dread hunger future that we want, that we, that we hope for. There will also be things that we don't or can't see as players that the developer team do see. We're passionate players and that's a good thing, but it also skews our views and makes us overly emotional, sometimes to the point we'll call the developer team who made the game we love a whole assortment of negative names. But it also spawns from the entitlement we feel we have earned as paying, committed, passionate players. We see things through our own lens. We fail to recognise that others have something to offer too. It took me pushing my body and mind to breaking point with the doppelganger changes to finally realize I might not be the only one with a solution and other solutions can be brilliant. Sometimes the problem is you or you. So I ask any and all of you who have written a negative review for Dreadhunger, especially those with over a hundred hours to take down your review and write a new review under the lens of a grateful player who has recognised all the good things they love about Dreadhunger and want to put them into their review. Do so before playing any Dreadhunger games for a day and write them from your memory of the game. Remember all the good times in the game that you've had and make sure that your review is fair to the game. I personally think it's almost inconceivably unfair to play 1000 hours plus of a video game and leave a negative review. To get that many hours of entertainment and be so consumed by your negative experiences in-game that you forget the positives that kept you playing for a thousand hours. If you're in that boat, please take some breaths, read your old review, and ask yourself if it's really a fair review of the game. I'm optimistic that logic and common sense will prevail over emotion-filled bad reviews from weeks ago. <laughs> The excessive negative reviews 
hurt Dreadhunger's chance of gaining new players, specifically English-speaking players. I'm not asking you to ignore the things you dislike in your review, but I'm asking you to think about all the good things that makes you love Dreadhunger, and ask yourself if the negatives you had in your original review are really that bad, or if your brain's player entitlement amplified them as problems 10 times bigger than they actually are. As for all the players who are leaving negative reviews based on the fact that English lobbies are minimal and there are excessive Chinese or non-English speaking lobbies, I ask you what is the point of leaving that in a review? Is it to warn players that when they get this game they may have to wait 10 minutes for a lobby instead of two? Is it, is your patience that thin that you can't wait 10 minutes? Maybe it's half an hour, half an hour is a bit excessive, sure. Can you not do other things while you're waiting? Can you not just play at a different time when there are more English speaking lobbies? It's not like you're unaware that there is a peak hour when there are more English speaking lobbies. I play Dreadhunger almost every day and I don't have to wait longer than 10 minutes because of the time that I choose to play. I'm not saying that you can't leap that in your review, but I am saying, what does that achieve putting it in your review? Are you putting players off? Are you, are you trying to make sure people don't join so that we continue to have no English speaking lobbies? Because that's all you're achieving. You're warning people about a problem that really isn't that bad. You're making it seem 10 times worse in your review than it actually is. And maybe you've had some negative experiences with it, but I'm telling you, it really isn't that bad. Anyone watching this video that's thinking about getting Dreadhunger, it's really not that bad. People are blowing it up out of proportion, either out of, maybe they've had some frustrating encounters. I, I don't know what their motivations are, but I can say that it isn't as bad and it is very much either the entitlement of expecting all lobbies to be English speaking or to have enough lobbies that they don't have to waste time or just having such a small amount of patience that they expect everyone else who's ever gonna buy the game to warn them of it, thinking they're doing some kind of duty of service or some care to the, to the community who, you know, people don't wanna wait 10 minutes. It blows my mind how big of a problem people have made this out to be. It's like, go make yourself a cup of tea. Get yourself a chocolate biscuit. Chill out for 10 minutes. Fuck. It's not that hard. And if, if it's too hard, do something else in that time period and play Dread Hunger another day. So if that is in your review, maybe listening to those words will knock a bit of common sense into you. And maybe you'll reconsider putting your review at least as a positive review that has the downside of lobbies being a bit slow. That's how I'd word it. It's lobbies do take a bit longer if you're an English speaker than if you're Chinese or another uh, overseas lo uh, language. All right. Anyway, as we were. Okay, let me interject real quick from my previously recorded self. Bit of uh, plumception here. This is me on the day of editing it. And I felt that there was a bit of a hole bit of a glaring hole in my video here and i wanted to add some stuff to it and just speak from the heart for a second okay i don't expect everyone who's watching this video to go in and suddenly change their review from negative to positive i'm asking you to consider it i'm asking you to take a deep breath i'm asking you to approach approach this rationally without emotion and to think did i get value from this game? Did I enjoy this game? Have I gotten my money's worth? And was it worth me buying this game? And would I therefore recommend that value to another player? Any Anything else other than that is fine. It's criticism. That's okay. But criticism, being upset about certain little things in the game, or even slightly bigger things, isn't the same as would you recommend it to other people? That's what I'm trying to get at here. And player entitlement and a lack of respect for the developers and, and generally each other in this game has led to this crisis in Dreadhunger. Crisis might be a bit of a dramatic word. I mean, I'm reading some of these reviews and when one of your, look, I don't mean to throw shade here, but when one of your lead creators leave, or leaves a review like this, there's a fucking problem, and it isn't with the game. It's with the mentality of the players. And it concerns me how many people are following suit with these kind of reviews. They're saying, well, I've played 3,000 hours of this game, 
I have gotten more than my fair share and money's worth out of this game. And I'm still going to have the balls and the sheer audacity to not recommend this to other people because I got this amazing value out of it. I've enjoyed it. I've, for most of it, loved it and kept me playing for this many hours. But don't you dare think about getting this game because of these little things I'm going to list off that to me are big deals and have amplified in your head. And the, the way it amplifies, the way I think it amplifies, and I've gone through this a lot. I think you, a problem is created, all right? A problem is created, whether it's muskets, whether it's uh, Chinese players being too many, whether it's the way the development team reacts or handles people being banned, whether it's uh, even things like nitro rushing or any other issue that I've mentioned throughout this video. That issue starts out and you start the game and you get a bit irritated by it. Maybe you start a lobby, it takes a while to join. Maybe you play a game, some asshole calls you some kind of f nasty, horrible slur or whatever word they're choosing to use that day over the open mic. And since it's open mic, they can get away with it. That might be banned, but it doesn't take away the fact that they can do that too. Anyway, whatever you want to, whatever the issue is, that issue happens. Maybe you make an effort to, shall we say, present that issue to another person, whether that's the developer team, whether that's uh, someone in the Discord, in the Discord chat, whatever it is, you're bringing it up as an issue. That issue is then either A, addressed, but isn't really able to be changed because let's face it, one person saying this is an issue isn't going to be a reason to redo the entire game's design with muskets, uh, with any issue in this game. Uh, <laughs> and that isn't even considering the fact that the developers are entitled and are completely allowed to have their own vision for what they want their game to be. That's a whole nother issue. Um, it's a whole nother part of this, but that issue therefore falls on somewhat deaf ears or creates an argument or doesn't get resolved to a, to a degree that you're happy with. You might play again. You might play another 10 hours. That problem happens a bunch of times. You, oh, you, you out yourself as Thrall and your Thrall partner also does that. Suddenly you've been shot by muskets. Your grand plan of killing everyone on day two didn't come out. You get punished. You're dead. You get shot across the map and now you're in a bad mood. And instead of, of course, addressing the fact you made a mistake in the game, no, you're not going to address that. You're going to blame this on the already cemented problem in your mind that muskets were overpowered or the game isn't balanced fairly towards the crew or the thrall or the approach isn't a good enough map or whatever you want to, whatever, whatever excuse you want to throw out, right? It's amplified. It turns from, well, this is annoying to... Well, now this has caused me to lose two games. And then it's made me lose five games. It's made me lose 10 games. And then you get 3,000 hours of it and you've lost, what, 300,000 games. And it causes you to say um, mildly delusional statements <laughs> in reviews. And that's a problem. Because people read these. <sighs> I saw a review earlier. I probably put it up on screen right now. It had something like 300 people or something, or something stupid like that. 300 people had found this useful. And it was a review that, let me just find it, and I'll say this accurately. I'll edit to when I find it. Okay, I've just found the review. It was from a guy named Zero, and I played with Zero before. I'm not throwing any shade at him. He's entitled to whatever he's written in this, and I have read this whole review. There are some fair critiques in here. It's a fair. There are fair critiques in here. There are also emotional responses in here. I'm not going to read it all out to you. But 941 people found this review helpful. 941 people have gone onto the Dreadhunger reviews. They've read it and they've said, well, this negative review, all the things that has been brought up here. I mean, he said it at the start. Dreadhunger is a fantastic game. He doesn't dislike the game but some glaring issues that overshadow any selling points. So he says he gets banned and that sucks. And that was a whole, the developers actually replied to this about an issue in a game that led him to being banned, but they went back on it because it was an issue. Anyway, um, then he talks about how there's Chinese, there's, there's far too many Chinese uh, language, there's too many language barriers basically 
to us, for English speaking players to play with um, uh, Chinese lobbies. So therefore there's too, not, not enough lobbies to be able to play regularly. And that's an issue, right? Fair, but again, not a big issue if you just play at the right times, the peak hours. But if you play outside of the peak hours, you will struggle to find a lobby. Does that mean you don't recommend the game on itself? No, you just play outside that is played during the peak hours or you wait 20 minutes, right? And you make a cup of tea, whatever it is. The game itself is a hidden gem. It's a brilliant experience, but I can't really draw comparisons to any other game. Yes, exactly. It's good. It's good. You must have a microphone. Of course it is. That's what makes it so good. It gives you personality instead of just what character movements you control. It's what gives Dread Hunger its strength. Um, cool. I'd say it's not really an issue. He doesn't even have an issue with the troll again. Why is why are we not recommending this so far? Brilliant game. Hard to find a game, but not really an issue if you play during the peak hours. He got banned, so he's a bit emotionally invested because of that. Uh, he still thinks the game's great. There's no text-based communication system. Well, there's a little one, but... And also, this was written in, what, March? It was updated in June, so it was this year. Um, uh, it's a shame that such a good game is ruined by the dev's moderation style. Now, I've, I read a lot of these reviews. People say that the moderation style from the developers is... is shall we say not ideal or they aren't happy with it and i'm not going to dispute that or go into that too much um i don't know how i'd run a moderation team if i was to run it i don't know where i'd draw the line on appropriate it's a moderation team so by definition it needs to draw lines in the sand and says well you can't cross this or this bad thing's going to happen to you They've, what's happened is they've drawn lines in the sand that a large majority of the English-speaking audience continually cross because of the difference in, shall we say, um, well, either it's a belief system in what they value. Um, a, a, a consistent critique I see in Dread Hunger is it's, it, people argue what defines racism, things like that. That is going to be a contentious issue no matter what in every part of this world every day i've got my own opinion on it you've got your own opinion on it we've probably got drawn we've probably drawn lines in the sand differently when i moderate my twitch chat where do i choose to what who gets kicked what's an inappropriate racist comment you know it, it's it's an issue but it isn't the fault of the game and it isn't the fault of the moderation team. They've drawn a line in the sand and you have to respect that. If you cross that, it is not their fault that you're banned. It's your fault because it's not like you... I mean, sure, the, again, once-off offenders would find out that that was an inappropriate thing they did. In theory, they could improve and not it wouldn't happen again. So in theory, people would never really get to the point where I got permanently banned and I don't know, I, I, I don't know what I did. Like, they always know probably what they did. It's, it's, if they're permanently banned. I can't speak too much on this. This is just my interpretation of this one review. But when 941 people are finding it useful, you pay attention, you read it, and you, you try to work out what they're digesting and what they're taking away from the message. And that's what I'm trying to do here. This is just one big review. So, Zero, if you're hearing this, I want, I implore you to reconsider your review especially i mean once we get to the end of it we'll see where it all lies but i'm curious why you've said you've used the words brilliant hidden gem uh, a lot of other very positive words brilliant experience yet you've gone and said no one should play it you've said the the fact that it's a brilliant game is overshadowed by issues such as permanently banned emotionally invested fair enough um, but again, not a not a not an actual reason to tell people not to get the game. Just a personal issue. Um, Steam charts signaling there's a lot of people, but a lot of them are Chinese. Again, not an issue really. Just play it. Uh, just play. Choose, when, if you choose, to, if you're gonna sit down and play Dread Hunger, choose to do it at a certain time. That makes sense. It isn't a reason to not recommend the game. It's it's a, it's a it's irritating at the most. It's it's, it's a little annoying. But it's not a reason to never ever play dread hunger and tell people you can't you shouldn't play either it's like oh no it took me an extra 10 minutes than usual um uh communication can be an issue i mean it's these are all they're very small things they're small things and the way i would describe it the way i've read this review so far they're small things that have been amplified in the mind of this reviewer because of the fact 
that over time it has gotten larger and larger and the few times that the times they've brought it up as an issue they've either quote unquote been ignored or the moderation team hasn't taken it hasn't gone in the direction they wanted or they don't they're not happy they're, they're not showing the respect to the people who run the game whatever it is i can't speak to exactly zero's experience here but i can say that so far in this review it's looking more like a positive review than a negative review with an emotional uh shall we say tilt towards uh negative um abundance of trolls he's not even having an issue that with, with this i don't have an issue with trolls either you get like one troll it's like oh it sucks but you kind of have a laugh about it move on um is ruined by devs moderation team moderation team again not an issue it's not the game's fault it's not the devs fault that moderation has to exist and they've drawn a line in the sand that you don't agree with i don't personally agree with the moderation teams um with a lot i don't i don't personally agree with a lot of the lines in the sand that they draw that's different to what i would draw doesn't mean i don't respect it doesn't mean i don't shall we say comply for lack of a better word you know um so anyway um ooh, i've left comments open the staff have now decided to unban me yep you got unbanned the temporary comms ban no friend read has been long since i wrote the review i think it's really changed i did manage to get rid of the 10 comms ban great uh there are less english-speaking players than ever again still a minor issue i'm st you play during the peak hours you find a game in five ten minutes one day that may not be the case and then you go well it's annoying and maybe you shouldn't buy the game then but at this point it's being over dramatic it's being over dramatic same story as the main review gameplay is great concept is great stuff not so great lack of players not so great lack of updates so not great now the lack of updates thing is actually very interesting i've 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 read this in a lot of reviews i'm curious what a lack of updates means to an individual player so if you're listening to this and you haven't clicked off by now and you're not irritated at me for daring to speak on this issue um where or, or what would you consider a, an appropriate amount of updates let's say a year how many updates in one year would you say would make you happy as a as a player now we've been trained as players as gamers to expect an update every i mean league of legends does an update every what is it two three weeks something they pump them out fucking crazy they've got a huge team of people just pumping out updates there's there's bigger updates that take longer like the end of season updates one once a year for like league of legends overwatch i mean if you look at, don't use overwatch as an example as, as uh for speed of updates and quality of updates but you know what i mean um what is the number what is the secret number that would help people say well i'm happy the moderate the, the, the updates have come out quite regularly this year we've had a whole new section of the in the pre-game lobby with merchants the ability to dress our characters up even if people complain about dlc i have a whole section about dlc in this video so i won't go into this now um they have whole two new spells they've up they brought out the new map at the they brought out expanse as a new map at the start of the year let's not forget that it's only been what it was february when it got released it's been 10 months since the, the first map was released people were saying updates don't come out enough interesting they then reworked that entire map in less than a year and if you look at the sheer volume of work that goes into one dreadhunger map that's and and considering the size of the team that do the work i it's in it's an inconsiderate criticism it's saying well the standard that like what they, i think actually this is actually interesting um the quality of the game is so high that the expectation of how quickly it must be updated is also high and those don't balance out because at the end of the day the game is exceptional and it really is you're not going to see many people go into these reviews and i've read a fuck ton of them now you're not going to see many that say well the game is shit like you don't see that the issues aren't the game itself they aren't the quality of the game they aren't the characters they aren't the quality of the interactions or the, there's maybe a little bit of lag on the ship but it's really not an issue that isn't something that happens that isn't the critique the critique are small i would use the word petty excuses to uh excuses that have amplified and created larger and larger and larger and larger and, and have 
become this massive issue in the reviewer's mind that has led to them leaving a negative review despite all the glaringly overwhelming positives that are in Dread Hunger. And I would say anyone with logic or common sense or who is using logic and common sense to write a review for Dread Hunger would leave a positive review. You could mention things like, well, it's irritating that there aren't enough English lobbies. Fair game. It's irritating that the dev team uh, considered what I said to be racist when I would say it was completely fair that I kicked a player that couldn't speak community, that couldn't speak Chinese. I'd also say that's completely fair personally. Uh, if you're in a com if you if you can't communicate in a social deception game, it's, I think it's fair game that you probably shouldn't play with people you can't communicate with. It just creates issues for that upcoming game, and issues should be avoided. Uh, it sucks, but it's the best alternative short of learning another language, which I haven't made the effort to do yet. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting issue. And I want to get back to my main section of what I'm doing. I've been talking for, what, 10 minutes now. This has been a really long section. I really don't know what to do with this. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say in this video. And let's circle back around and go into the rest of what I had to say on this. Thanks, Gus. Together, we can fix this community's negative headspace and grow the player base, grow the game, and have no shortage of lobbies. We'll be excited and grateful for each update that comes out, and with more positive reviews and general attitude towards the game, the development team will be more likely to take the critiques that do come along more seriously. Of course, it's still their game, but it's a far more likely environment for player critiques to actually be addressed and fixed. Thank you all for listening through this rant style video. I know there were a lot of hard truths in here, and I hope you can take them as the necessary comments to fix this plague of entitlement that swept through the Dread Hunger player base. My own player entitlement left me feeling truly horrendous. And I wouldn't wish that feeling on anyone. Good luck out in the Arctic and watch out for Bongo.